Coming up, Korea denounces Japan for approving a batch of history school textbooks carrying territorial claims to Korea's easternmost Dokdo Island. A diplomatic blue paper to be released in Tokyo today is set to make similar claims. President Park and Hay pledges to consider salvaging the Seulho ferry that sank off Korea's southwestern coast nearly one year ago. Plus, Kenya bombs two Al Shabaab camps in Somalia in the first major military response to last week's university massacre. These stories are more coming up right now. Hello to our viewers around the world. It's 6am on Tuesday, April 7th here in Seoul. Thanks for joining us. I'm Mark Broom. Our top story this morning. The Korean government has reacted with fury to Tokyo's decision to approve new history textbooks, making some of the strongest claims yet to Korea's easternmost Dokdo Island. Seoul's foreign ministry says the move shows Japan is not interested in winning trust or being a responsible neighbour. Our Hwang Sang-hee reports. Korea slammed Japan on Monday over a set of new school textbooks containing stronger claims over Korea's Tokdo Island. Japan once again took a provocative step by approving middle school textbooks that distort unequivocal historical facts. The changes are part of Japan's annual textbook reviews. The number of textbooks stating Tokdo as being illegally occupied by Korea is now 13, more than triple the number four years ago. That means the majority of middle school students in Japan will be learning Tokyo's unjustified claims from next spring. Fifth and sixth graders are already using textbooks with similar claims. To protest the latest revision, Seoul's foreign ministry summoned Japanese ambassador to Korea, Koro Betsho, and called for Tokyo's sincerity in time for the 50th anniversary of normalizing diplomatic ties. We urge Japan to make efforts to improve the bilateral ties with sincerity based on spirits of apologies made by its previous administrations at a landmark year. The ministry is also promoting Tokdo online in 11 languages, including Italian, Portuguese and Hindi. Tokyo's unjustified claims over Tokdo, known as Takeshima in Japanese, have been one of the thorniest issues between the two neighbors. Japan is set to unveil its 2015 diplomatic paper on Tuesday, which will reportedly repeat its claims over Tokdo. And if so, that will only further dampen bilateral relations, which are already at their historic low in recent years. Hwang Tang-hee, Arirang News. Meanwhile, some of those recently approved school textbooks by Japan are raising more eyebrows in Korea over their historical description of Japan's colonial aggressions. Seoul-based Yonhap News Agency reports that while most of the textbooks contain an objective depiction of history, some books by right-wing publishers contain some rather controversial descriptions that could be interpreted as glorifying Japan's invasion of Korea and its subsequent colonial rule. The report cited one history textbook which included a comparison of the Korean population, schools and farm land from 1911 and 1936 which could be viewed as trying to show that Imperial Japan's rule contributed to Korea's modernization. However, the report did stress that there were also textbooks that sharply criticized Japan's colonization. Korea and Japan have agreed to resume a long-suspended security dialogue later this month to discuss the current situation on the Korean Peninsula and other East Asian regions. Japan's Kyodo News Agency reported Monday that senior defense and foreign affairs officials from the two countries will meet in Seoul next Tuesday. During the so-called 2 plus 2 meeting, Japan plans to explain the revised U.S.-Japan defense guideline to Korea. The two sides are also expected to share insights on North Korea's nuclear and missile programs. The talks have been suspended since the last meeting in late 2009 due to strained bilateral relations 
over history-related issues. Now, as the one-year anniversary of that fateful day approaches, President Park and Hay has pledged to consider raising the sunken Sewolho ferry from waters off Korea's southwestern coast. The president says she will make a decision following consultations with the families and salvage experts. Sao Chae Sun reports. With nine bodies still unaccounted for, the families of the Sewolho ferry victims are demanding an immediate recovery of the ship. They're also asking the government to hold off on compensations until an independent probe into the accident is completed. The latest survey by the Korea Research Center showed 77 percent of Korean people support salvaging the vessel. President Park Geun-hye talked about an ongoing civilian-led review of the recovery process at Monday's secretary's meeting. While this has been Seoul's position on the sunken ferry, watchers say that President Buck's reference to an active consideration is a sign that the administration may be leaning more towards pulling the vessel out of the sea. With the one-year anniversary of the April 16th disaster looming, the leaders of both the country's main rival parties are pressing the government to make a decision on the ferry's recovery. The Sewolho ferry must be salvaged. Finding the truth behind the Sewolho ferry disaster is our country's obligation and the public's stern order. Some within the ruling Senate party, however, argue the salvaging process is too costly and could lead to more casualties. It's estimated that the recovery would cost up to 184 million U.S. dollars. A report from the technical review is expected to be publicized before April 16th. As for how to go about gathering public opinion following that report, the ruling party floor leader has openly rejected Ocean's Minister Yuki Jun's proposal to conduct a poll. Choi yoo Sun, Arirang News. Now, on a lighter note, if you're watching us on a computer monitor with a TV tuner, it's highly likely it was made by one of Korea's tech giants, Samsung Electronics or LG Electronics. As this next report shows, both companies have maintained their vice-like grip on the global TV monitor market last year. Park ji has the details. Two of Korea's leading electronics companies, LG and Samsung, virtually dominated the global market for TV monitors last year. A report issued by U.S. market researcher IDC on Monday showed the combined market share of LG and Samsung Electronics exceeded 99 percent of the worldwide market for TV monitors. LG accounted for 53 percent, while Samsung followed with a share of 46.2 percent. TV monitors can double as both TV and computer screens. The strength of the two Korean manufacturers in this market stems from the fact that they've already established themselves with having state-of-the-art LCD display technologies, giving them a leg up on the competition. I think they will keep their current status for some time. But to maintain their current market dominance, both companies need to continuously develop their monitors to keep up with next-generation display technologies to produce higher-quality products. IDC also projects TV monitors will further expand to account for 6.5 percent of the overall global screen market this year, a 0.7 percentage point from last year, as the devices are becoming more popular with those living alone and more households are buying the monitors as a second television set. Park ji Arirang News. Now, despite recent rate cuts by Korea's central bank, which made it easier for firms to cover their costs, a large number of major Korean companies have been unable to even pay off the interest on their debt. For more on why these firms are still struggling despite the record low interest rate, Gon Sua reports. One out of four of Korea's biggest companies are having a hard time covering their interest debts with their earnings. 
According to conglomerate tracking market researcher Tebal.com, 37 companies that made annual sales of more than 910 million U.S. dollars last year recorded an interest coverage ratio of below 1. A ratio above 1 means the company makes more than it has to pay in interest. Below 1 means it's unable to cover its debts. It may seem ironic that the number of firms in the below one category increased by nearly two percentage points from 2013, despite the Bank of Korea's two key interest rate cuts last year, leading to cheaper borrowing costs. The operating profits of large firms are shrinking at a bigger rate than the interest rate cut has shrunk interest payment burdens. This is especially so since the economy's growth rate fell to around 3 percent since 2011. Data shows the shipbuilding, steel and petrochemical industries have struggled the most to pay off their interest debts. For instance, Hyundai Heavy Industries, the world's largest shipbuilder, posted an operating loss of 1.7 billion U.S. dollars last year. The sectors that have been most affected are those highly dependent on exports. Since Korea is especially dependent on exports to China, an earnings slump is expected to continue following China's slowing economy. That's why, with no immediate signs of improving external factors, analysts forecast that this year will continue to be challenging. Although the central bank's rate cuts were not enough to help large companies repay their interest debts, experts say that in order to enhance investment conditions, another cut may be inevitable. Kwon Soa, Arirang News. Kenya says it's launched airstrikes against Islamic extremists in Somalia after last week's horrific college attack. A spokesman for the Kenyan Air Force said the airstrikes were launched against two Al-Shabaab camps in remote regions of Somalia on Sunday night local time. He added that the strikes are part of the continued process and engagement against Al-Shabaab, which will go on. The strikes are consistent with the Kenyan president's vow that his nation would respond to the school shooting in the strongest way possible. Turkey blocked access to Twitter, Facebook and YouTube on Monday over the publication of photographs of a well-known Istanbul prosecutor held at gunpoint by far-left militants hours before he was killed in a shootout last week. A senior Turkish official said another prosecutor had sought the block on access to social media sites because some media organizations had acted as if they were spreading terrorist propaganda in sharing the images. Twitter subsequently removed the photos and a ban on the micro-blogging site was lifted some several hours after it was imposed. Officials say Facebook has agreed to restrict some content in Turkey and talks with YouTube are underway. Now, e-cigarettes are one of the biggest up-and-coming businesses in Korea and the recent price hike on regular cigarettes has prompted thousands more to start what they call vaping. Now, there are still a lot of unknowns about this relatively new device, but researchers in Korea claim they have evidence that e-cigarettes still contain high amounts of toxins. Our Connie Kim has more. Smokers who think electronic cigarettes are a healthy way to quit smoking may want to think again. In a statement released Monday by Korea's National Evidence-Based Healthcare Collaborating Agency, experts and doctors agreed that e-cigarettes could cause significant harm and may not help smokers butt out. The agency says that cancer-causing substances are still present in e-cigarettes, although at lower levels. In addition, harmful constituents not permitted in regular cigarettes could be included in e-cigarettes. And it's still difficult to tell how much nicotine e-cigarette smokers inhale. Finally, the agency determined that it's not appropriate to promote e-cigarettes as an answer for people who want to quit smoking. Under the Korean law, electronic cigarettes are considered cigarettes. Until comprehensive research proves that e-cigarettes are harm-free and contribute to quitting smoking. Nicotine patches or chews that are scientifically proven to be safe should be promoted. However, e-cigarette businesses say their products are effective quitting devices. We've seen many smokers quit smoking after switching to electronic cigarettes. Also, if we compare the number of harmful substances in cigarettes and electronic cigarettes, the latter is much less. 
According to Euromonitor International, the global market size for e-cigarettes was 7 billion U.S. dollars last year. The Korean market grew to 27.7 million dollars in 2014. Experts say more study is required to conclude whether electronic cigarettes are truly harmful and whether they're effective in quitting smoking. But the World Health Organization is urging countries to implement tougher controls on any products, including e-cigarettes, that may promote smoking. Connie Kim, Arirang News. Well, that's pretty much all we have for now. Plenty more stories are online, and it's also worth uh, downloading our smartphone app for the latest news and programs. And while we are speaking of programs, we have just started a brand new season here on Adidang TV. So there are lots more new shows coming your way, including our new economy related news show, Business Daily. That's going to be coming to you every weekday at 8 a.m. Korea time. So definitely worth checking that out. Have a great day. Goodbye. Thank <music> you.